present house, let's lift up our hands and just bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Just bless him. Oh, let the sweetness of his presence fill your soul. Let him fill your soul. Come be with us, Lord. Speaking us your word. For there's no other way to know you more. To shed a light on us. Shed on us your light, your light. Shed on us your light. We now welcome you. To transform and renew. In 
the glory of the reason who can compare all oh, with the beauty of the Lord I will proclaim The glory of the risen Lamb Who once was slain To reconcile men with God Forever you will be The Lamb upon the throne Le Bacoria die And I gladly bow my knee To worship you alone Lift it up forever you
How can I express a love that's unexpressible? How can I describe a God that's indescribable? I'm lost for words, so my spirit says, Oh, my heart speaks oh, 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 oh. My heart speaks oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh.
You are the song I sing. You mean the world to me.
There's no me without you, Lord. You make me who I am. When I'm weak, you are so strong. There's no me without you, Lord. No chin talk without you, Lord. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the whole Lamb of God who was. Precious blood until I am a lamb of God. Oh, lamb of God, sweet lamb of God. I love the Is my Jesus Christ the Lamb of God? Is my Jesus Christ a holy Lamb of God? Is my Jesus Christ the Lamb? He has to become personal to you. Is my Jesus Christ? The Lamb of God, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. To your blood and to the realm, you saved the son of Abraham. To the power of your hand, you turned the sea into dry land. To the outcast on her knees, you were the God who really sees, and by your might you set your children free. Oh, the barada God of your tire, and by your might you set your children free. This morning, by your might you set your children free. By your mind, you set your children free. Say it again. By your mind, you set your children Let the spirit of might fill this house. Say it again. By your mind, you set your children Let him fill this place with the power of his mind. By your mind, you set your Every form of bondage, we come against Let my people go that they may worship me. We declare to Egypt, let my people go that they may worship me. So they want the souls of Iran, they Iran. The Lord is setting people free from different things. Oh, I see the bondage of a depression. It is going. Everybody thinks you are successful, but you are under the hand of drugs. Today, in the name of Jesus, I bring you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for money, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You are the planting of God in you. Children free. 
against sexual addiction. To my kebarodi lie. Yes, on peke diapaya. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. He has broken the gates of brass. He has cut the bars of iron asunder. I decree in the name of Jesus, your liberty has come now. He runda kabadoli ataineta. He shote baranda kaya. He runda bakosi. Save the son of Abraham to the power of your hands. Turn the sea into dry land to the outcast on her knees. You will the God who releases and by your might you set your children free. Elohim and Adonai It's the way to us still the same By the power of the name El Shaddai El Shaddai Ekan Khan and Adonai We will praise and lift you To the years you made it clear that the time of Christ was near. Though the people couldn't see what Messiah ought to be. Though your word contained the plan, they just could not understand. I almost saw some work was done to the frailty of your son. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim and Adonai, it's the way you're still the same by the power of the name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Akon Khan and Adonai, we will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. We will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. We will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. <laughs> we will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. We will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. We will praise and lift you high. Blessed are you, O oh Lord our God, eternity's holy king. Blessed are you, O oh Lord our God. Your word brings on the evening. Blessed are you, O oh Lord our God. Eternity's holy king. Blessed are you, O oh Lord our God. Your word brings on the evening. Baraku e Adonai Hamevorak Leolam Vahe 
Baraku e Adonai Hamevorak Leolam Bayem Baraku e Adonai Hamevorak Leolam Bayem Say that one more time Baraku e Adonai Hamevorak By wisdom, O oh Lord, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the seasons. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light. Arranging the stars to your pleasing. Baraku, Adonai, To the Holy One we sing, Lord of hosts is your name. O oh, ever living God, rule over us, you're now and forever the same. Baraku e Adonai, blessed be the Lord. That's what you're saying, Baraku. Pray in the spirit for a minute. Let the musicians just play. You bask in the river of that presence and enjoy beholding his face. You have to be so comfortable with his presence and yet never lose your awe, never lose your wonder. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The greatest delight your spirit must know is running into his presence. David said, in this one thing will I be confident that one thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, beholding his beauty and inquiring in his temple. this presence every time there's a song in your in your mouth the Lord is my portion in the land of the living the Lord is good forevermore the Lord is my portion in the land of the living the Lord 
when you are coming from the presence you're not saying it like something you hope will happen it's something you know is my passion in the land of the living the Lord is you leave that place and fear is banished you know that there's no man no man born of woman that can exert upon you you know the Lord is the person of my inheritance. He maintains my Lord. Say it one more time. Lord, Lord, Lord is my portion.
Hallelujah. 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 What a joy to share the presence of God together. What a joy to stand before the God of all the earth. What a joy. What a joy to see him set the captives free. What a joy. What a joy to be introduced to the liberty that is in Christ Jesus. What a joy. What a joy to see the true image that we were born to be. What a joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't feel like preaching anything. I don't feel like preaching nothing. Hey! Because I was born to be God's dwelling place. A home for the presence of my God. My God! No God invites you to be his tabernacle. Only Jehovah. That's to tell you that beside him there's no God. They don't exist. The Bible says all the gods of the nations, they are idols. They were formed by the imagination of men and given a shape out of wood or stone. But the God, the Lord God, he formed the nations. The Bible says in Isaiah 40 that he is strong in power. There is not one thing he has created that fails. So God decided to display how powerful he was. And he decided to do it without supervision. So he created everything with the power to sustain itself in itself. So he set the sun in its orbit. And it has never failed. God does not supervise it. He rolled it like a dice and he was sure it will never fail. So when man tries to comprehend his greatness, it's, not, it's, it's, a, it's an attempt in futility. You cannot. The man can capture him. You cannot. The Bible says he created everything with seed bearing fruit so that he does not need to be involved for them to perpetuate. God does not supervise creation. He set creation rolling in an order that will never clash. So no star is brushing another star in the sky. And there are myriads of stars in the skies. So that every day you lift up your eyes, understand that it's not an accident. Someone called them into order. Who told the sun where to stand in the morning? And who told the oceans you can only come this far? And who showed the moon where? What? So that he does not hit another star. said in Romans chapter 1 God is not struggling to prove anything to anybody he said if any man observes creation he will see the Godhead of God and his supernatural power and that 
great redeemer that one that is mighty who spreads everything in space is still consciously watching over you alone so the songwriter said I know you had me on your mind when you climbed upon that hill and you saw me with eternal eyes while I was yet in sin Redeemer, Savior and friend Redeemer Redeem my heart again Savior Come and shelter me from sin You're familiar with my weakness Devoted till the end, Redeemer, Savior, friend. See, let me give you an invitation today. Many people are afraid to dive deep into God because they are afraid that their weakness will find them out. What you don't know is that God did not invite you to solve your weakness, then come. He said, Come, let us reason together. Then he saw you checking yourself. Who is he calling? I'm not worthy. Then he said, oh, no, 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 no. Though your sins are red as scarlet, I will make them. God is not expecting you to have any ability to make it. The moment you come, if you actually came in truth, the grace you find at his throne swallows up your weakness. See, if you fix yourself before you came, you will have a reason to boast. And everything that can boast smells like filthy rags to God. The Bible says, it is not of works, it is of grace, so that no man can boast. Paul said, see your calling, brethren. Not many great, not many wise, not many strong. He said, God chose the weak, he chose the base, he chose the little. He said, and he chose the things that are not to confound the things that are so that no flesh will glory in his presence. Ooh, my God. So the grace you poured upon my life will return to you in praise and I will gladly lay down all my pride for the name by which I'm saved for the name by which I'm saved Redeemer Redeem my heart again Savior come and shelter me from sin you're familiar with my weakness Devoted till the end, Redeemer. Oh, so in Psalm 103, the psalmist said, He remembers our frame, He knows that we are dust. He's not a wicked taskmaster, He knows where your struggles are, and He knows you cannot help yourself. See the nature of his invitation. Listen to what he said in Revelation 3.20. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You know it's easy to use that in an evangelical crusade. But don't forget he was speaking to a church. In Revelation 3, it was a church he was addressing. The church got too involved with the activities of their lives and their religion that they threw the owner of the house out. And he was standing at the door and knocking. Then he said, If any man will hear my voice, how many men? Any man. He said, and he opens the door. Listen to what he said. He said, I will come in. Then he said, I will eat with him and he with me. No, 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 no. I wish you heard. He would have simply said, I will eat with him. And naturally, if I will eat with him, then naturally he will eat with me. But you see, scripture is not written in vain. It's not written carelessly. That means that the first thing we will partake of is what he serves. 
I will eat with him. That means he's the first to present. And what is he presenting? Weaknesses. Incapabilities. What is he presenting? How did he throw him out? Insufficiencies. Lack of strength. That's what you present. I was describing in the workers meeting. I said, let me tell you. Nobody qualifies to worship him. Nobody will ever qualify. Don't wait for the day you qualify. And I gave them an illustration. Have you ever had a six-year-old in your house who came back from school and tore a leaflet in his book and attempted to draw the family? You do a fine artwork of the family. Have you had a six-year-old? If a six-year-old attempts to draw your family, you will most likely become a broomstick with a round O on the top. And just so that they cannot this his father, he put three straight lines. And then mother. And you will look at that six-year-old. You're, you're not going to say to that six-year-old, what, what rubbish do you do? Is this how I look? We will know you are mad. You will look at that drawing and say, oh, what a beautiful... And you know that by portrait standard, that's not anything to be presented. But the delight you have towards the son qualifies the sacrifice he brings. That's how God accepts your offering. So every time he says, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the and we offer unto thee the sacrifice is of thanksgiving and we offer unto thee the sacrifice God tells the angels who sing better than you yes. my son is singing if you ever hear angel harmony if you ever hear angel and harmony, you will stop the attempt on earth to reach it. Because on earth we have three parts and a few off parts, three or four off parts. And the music we create sounds beautiful in our ears until you hear how angels say. But God will rather hear your croaky voice in the bathroom. Oh, what is man that you are mindful is partial when it comes to men. Partial. Unashamedly so. So God's heart is broken when you are trying to perfect yourself. Because he's looking at you and thinking, what, how much can you do? And I said to them on that day, that's why we try our best. Because we know you're deserving of it all. You're deserving of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Sing that two times. You deserve it all. You're deserving of it all. From you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Say that one more time, a minute. You deserve.
you say what the, what you mean is that there's nothing I bring that is a privilege for you to receive. There's nothing that is a privilege for God to collect from you. He deserves much more than you bring. When you understand it, you'll become reckless in your worship. The invitation is to come to the table. Ah. Let's sit down for one moment. From deep within me, I hear you calling an invitation to come to the table with you.
it is God who is at work in you both to win and to do that means listen to me you cannot will to do good and execute it God has to will it in you people find following God very difficult because they don't even understand how he works God is the one who feels first wills in you because he who began has to be faithful to complete now if you began to will you have to have the power to execute because the person that began is the person that will complete so there's no power in you to will to do good and execute it it is God who is at work in you first to will and then to do listen that's why Romans chapter 8 said let me say this and I'll close this morning ah Romans chapter 8 said that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. I need you to understand this. If you understand this, your, your service to God will revolutionize. God doesn't like effort. He loves grace. He loves grace. The problem is that he can send you grace and you make grace vain. First Corinthians 15. He can send you grace and you frustrate grace. Galatians chapter 4. Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he said, the grace that was bestowed unto me was not in vain. That means God can send you grace and you make it vain. God can send you grace and you frustrate it. But God doesn't like effort. Listen to this. Before he said the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. In Romans chapter 7, he juxtaposed a contradiction. He said, every time I will to do go, good, I will will it. But to, the power to execute it is not with me. So I will desire to do good. Then evil will result. Then he said, I find a law at work in my members. That means what destroys the will is a law. I come again. I will to do good. But at the end of the day, I find out that I cannot execute it. That's how he closed Romans chapter 7 with a lamentation. Oh, wretched man that I am. So every time I desire to do good, let me tell you the truth. No man who is born again, who lost the Lord, does evil deliberately. We naturally feel overpowered by a law. And that law is at work in our members. Everybody can relate with this. Do you realize why the Bible says you should flee from lust? The reason is because lust is, an, is a law. The moment it triggers in your members, there's no amount of holiness and tongues that will deliver you. So if you're in an environment and lust is triggered, God's recommendation is run away from there. Because all your born again will, will end because a law has been triggered. Some of that law is biological. That was the law Satan kept protesting Jesus. Because after what he was unhungered and God had declared him the son of God with power. That means he had the power to do whatever. And Satan said to him, now that the lust of your flesh is triggered, use the power of God to satisfy your self-desire. Turn this stone into what satisfies your lust. Jesus said, I would rather die than not wait upon the Lord to send the word that will deliver me from the situation. Listen to me. The power of God available to you is for the service of others, not for the fulfilling of your own lust. How do we know? In the day when Jesus was standing in front of 5,000 who were hungry, the same thing he resisted Satan for. He broke bread, multiplied it, and gave them. That means the problem was not multiplying bread. The problem was to what end? 
if the end if the end is to satisfy my lust I would wait upon the Lord God said to me you have not understood the discipline of leadership until you do not exert your power every time you are provoked please take it to your office your, your, your employees will, will bless you by the end of this year God showed me how much power was upon the shoulder of Jesus when he was heading towards the cross. And if Jesus had opened his mouth once and said, enough, angels would have stopped the entire process. So the toughest part of the journey to the cross was him keeping his mouth shut. That's why the Bible prophesied and said he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And he was put before as a sheep before his shearers. He opened not his mouth. And after I preached it for a long while, God set me in a situation where I will have been able to execute the powers of my office and shift everything. They put me in a place where for four months I was not permitted to open my mouth. True power is power in control. That's true power. When you can subdue, when how you feel does not stir up the authority available to you. So you can be angry at what your child did at home, but you will not exact the office of being a father. You will not exact the office of being a mother. You are, stop, you are stopping and waiting upon the Lord and saying, Lord, show me the place where this child is broken so that I can understand how to fix it. Lest I use my power and break the child a little more. That's how we know you're a believer. When the power available to you comes under control. Listen, that was the toughest part of going to the cross for Jesus. It was the toughest part. Keeping his mouth shut. And not exerting the power available to him. Because this is the understanding. I was trying to say to you that the power of lust the moment it is triggered in the body, when that law is triggered, every goodwill dies at the triggering of that law. Listen to this. Something is about to hit you. That means no matter how much good I generate in my heart. I sat down with a young man and I was counseling with him. And he told me about how he stumbled and he fell. And I listened to him and I realized that when he set out on that project, he did not set out with the intention to fall. But when lust was triggered, he did not know the principle to flee. Ah. Some of us love the good we want to do so much that we don't know when to stop and run away. Ask Joseph. He'll tell you. Listen. So when the law is triggered, the wheel is broken. Every time I set out to do good, evil is present with me. Oh, wretched man that I am. Then he said, but thanks be to God in Jesus Christ. So with my body, I will serve the law of sin. But with my heart, I will serve the Lord God. For there is therefore now no condemnation. See, I broke the chapters in between so that you can see it. For there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Listen to this. That means that the law of the flesh is such that the moment it stands in front of you, you start to walk after it. Are you following me? That's the law. Please return. Then he said, There's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh? So the flesh is so powerful. If it stands in front of you, you will start walking after it. He said, But they walk after the spirit. Then he said, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Hey! If you don't get down, I cannot help you. Has set me free from the... Wait. What destroys will? What destroys will? And God knows 
that as surely as that law shows up, your will is broken. So what he decided to do was not to strengthen your will. It was to create a law higher than the law that compels you. He called it the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. He said that law breaks the power of the law of sin and death. So the same way lust stands in front of me and I have no choice, I follow it. God created a new law. It's called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The moment that law stands in front of me, I have no choice but to follow it. First Corinthians chapter 9, Paul says, Oh boy, I have become a slave. He said, whether I choose to preach the gospel or I do not choose to preach the gospel, I ultimately find myself preaching the gospel. He said, if I do it willingly, then a reward is waiting for me. He said, but if not, a dispensation or a compulsion of the gospel is laid upon me. And woe is me. The same way Paul said, oh, wretched man there. Paul said, woe is me here if I preach not the gospel. That means when Paul sees an opportunity to preach, there is a compelling power. Even if he says to God, I don't feel like doing it. The moment the spirit of life moves, he moves it. And he stands. And they said to him, Paul, they will arrest you there. He said, when he met me, he told me that bonds and afflictions are waiting for me in every city. Listen, when you become a slave of righteousness like this, there will be nothing you will achieve for God that will leave glorying in your mouth. You will know. I'm only an unprofitable servant. He compelled me. Just in case you don't understand what I'm saying. When I woke up this morning, my wife is here. I don't, I don't feel like preaching. So all this thing I did in first service and second service, there was no feeling attached to it. That's why when Pastor Jude said, do we need to hear from Pastor Chinto Kege as the people were around me? I did like this. We don't need it because Pastor Chin Talk does not feel like it. Can a preacher wake up and not feel like preaching? Yes. Very, very yes. But necessity is laid upon me and woe is me. So Pastor Jude stands here and creates a larger than life picture and says, let us welcome the man of God. And while you're thinking, Pastor Jude, why did you lie now? This is, this is too much for one man. Then the man of God he was talking about falls upon you while you are. That's how the anointing works. He falls upon you while you are climbing the staircase. Then you arrive as a different man. You take the microphone and your body knows that it didn't feel like it was tired in the morning. Your soul knew that there were other contemplations that were grinding in it. You didn't want to meditate on preaching anything to anybody. But there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the most high God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her and that right early. So I tell everyone, I don't need preparation to do God. I don't. The moment the spirit of life stands in front of me and I see a God opportunity, he falls upon me like a clock. I am turned into another man. There are days I don't feel like laying hands on the sick. Those are the best days to get the sick healed. Because as you walk on the streets, then someone will run in front of you and say, man of God. And then you remember that the garment of the Lord does not come and go off. It, it is a, it's an abiding garment. You turn around and you are suddenly turned into a different man. When you finish operating that way, listen, there'll be no portion of your life that can glory. Take it to your business. Take it to your home. Take it to your neighborhood. Take it everywhere you go. Remember that there is help and it can rise from deep within you. So listen, finally, how do I unlock it? 
conscious of it. Listen, too many people have more help than they experience because they are not conscious. Of the one I love is ever before me. He seals upon my heart. I leave for where the consciousness of the one who has said I will never leave you I will never forsake you I will never leave you is the covenant of his ever abiding presence I will never forsake you is the covenant of the deployment of every resource available to him to help you that means if I have it I will use it for you be conscious of the one who can help you be conscious of what he can do. And number three, pray in the spirit and stir up that consciousness. Stir up the power of that consciousness. There's a difficult question in the office. Tell them, I need to ease myself. Ah, oh, you said in this service, this is the air I breathe. That means to ease myself is, I need to breathe oxygen, I'm coming. Then you enter the toilet, shut the door. Mapalote, Krahandi, Stahaya. Lord, there's a wisdom in you that can answer the question in that boardroom. Right now, I place a demand on the river of God within me. Come alive, come alive. Oh Lord, I hunger for more of you. Rise up within me. Let me know your truth. Oh Holy Spirit, saturate my soul and let the life of God let it feel me now. Let your healing power breathe life and make me whole and let the peace of God let it rain. So you come out breathing shalom. You come out breathing answers. And people who were wondering what happened in the toilet, you went there to breathe. Everybody said, but they said, what's the answer to this thing? Ah, my, my God, this entire firm is in a quagmire here and we don't know what to do. Then you too, believer, carrying the Holy Ghost, you say, I don't know what to do. You are insulting the ability of God. The least God desires is that you enter a room, ventilate, focus, permit answers to rise up within you. Daniel said, tell the king to give us one night. The problem is that we use God for church things. We don't use God for every part of our lives. So we lacked help in many places where God was willing to help us. Saints, take this river home. Stay it up every time you are in need of God. Please lift up your hands one more time. Just lift them up in the beauty of holiness. And I want to say a simple prayer. Lord Jesus take me by the hand show me great and mighty things take me by the hand show me who you are take me by the hand show me great and mighty things I want to see you I want to see you see you only to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. I want to see your face. I want to know your ways. I want to touch your grace so I can live your days. I want to see you. I want to see you. Lord, take us by the hand. So us great and mighty things. Let everyone who is under this cloud of God begin to experience the supernatural every moment of their day. Let the consciousness of the one who has said, I will never leave nor forsake you. Let it wrap around us. And indeed, let your worship perpetuate everywhere we go. So that whether we stand, sit, sleep, or rise, the psalmist said on my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Feel our thoughts and meditations with you. And let your river flow freely in us. We give you praise, Father.